Following President Muhammad Buhari's commitments to ensuring quick completion of nationwide infrastructure, as underscored in the President's New Year address to Nigerians, the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing, in line with its mandate, began its plan for pre-rainy season work in order to ensure that commuters have a better travel experience during this year's rainy season. Pursuant to this objective, and without any inkling of what would unfold a few months into the year, the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola SAN, as part of a regular nationwide inspection, embarked on a series of trips to assess the progress of ongoing road infrastructure projects across the country, from highways that interconnect states to tarred roads in the most remote parts of the country that reconnect previously disconnected communities to economic hubs, the Honorable Minister, his colleague Minister of State Engineer Abubakar D. Aliu, and their team spent the first quarter of 2020 meeting with contractors, engineers, artisans, and community stakeholders at various project sites. Let's take you on a road trip across Nigeria showcasing our projects aimed at creating, rehabilitating, and expanding more roads to progress, as well as ensuring that specific challenged sections of highways were addressed before the rainy season. On the 27th of January 2020, the Honorable Minister commenced his inspection tour with a two-day visit to Niger State. The aim was to assess five ongoing road projects in Niger State which are strategic to Nigeria's National Development Plan. These projects are the dualization of the Suleja Mina Road, the reconstruction of Bidda Lapai Lambata Road, the construction of Agai Kacha Baro Road, the dualization of Jebba, Mokwa, Bokani Junction Road in Kwara and Niger states, and the rehabilitation of new Busa Kayama Road, which also connects Niger and Kwara states. Due to its strategic location as home to a major NNPC depot, roads in Niger state are plied daily by heavy duty trucks and tankers. Thus, during his interactions with the road construction site managers, the Honorable Minister emphasized the need to conduct emergency repairs on the damaged portions of existing roads in order for heavy-duty trucks to be able to navigate. Now what I want you to do, the part that has potholes uh -huh. that you are going to rebuild, yes. right? Try and make it motorable, okay. just like emergency repair, uh -huh. so that the trucks can move uh -huh. before the rain comes, uh -huh. while you are doing this good construction. You understand what I'm I saying? Understand. So you do some patching for trucks to move, vehicles to move while you are doing proper construction. The Honorable Minister also spoke with tanker operators, cautioning them to avoid oil spillage and other activities that could cause damage on the roads. The problem is that we have to finish the road. We, we start, you can see we start, but it's not, it's not finished. We need to asphalt. So if you park your trucks here, how the contractor can finish the job? The road will not last. The road will not last. You've seen the work being done on the Sulu Jamina Road um, and also the challenges that we face there, trucks using the shoulders of the road and even a recently asphalted road, road that was just asphalted two weeks ago, you started seeing diesel and petroleum products being dumped onto the road. 
that is going to break down the molecular binding capacity of the asphalt and ultimately in a matter of weeks if not months the road will fail that's a brand new road and then the uninformed will say that the road was not well built it was well built but petrochemical products and asphalted roads just don't mix so we want all of the truck users the owners association uh, NATO, the Drivers Association, uh, PTD, to take note and direct all their members to leave our highways. Those who want to operate vehicular fleet have the responsibility to also um, acquire their own parking areas. Besides the suggestions and words of caution to contractors and road users, the Honorable Minister also expressed his satisfaction with the job creation component of the road projects in the state. I am satisfied with the job creation component of the project. So on every roadside, there are hundreds of Nigerians getting work. Those are the economic issues that Mr. President is getting done and paying attention to. This infrastructure employs people. I am satisfied with the procurement part where aggregate, laterite, cross tools, iron rod, uh, people establishing crossing plants, quarries, um, asphalt plants. I'm satisfied with all that. That's the economic consequence of this strategic infrastructure intervention. That's the beginning. The end is the road. But in that process, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people will get employed. So when you see hundreds and thousands of trucks moving laterite, moving cement, moving iron rod. That's the economy already on the move, as the president promised. I'm satisfied with all of that, but I want to see, my, I want to see that double. From Niger State, the Honorable Minister moved down south to commence a five-day tour of the southeast and south-south of Nigeria. This include inspection of road projects in Edo, Delta, Anambra, Akwaibom, and Cross River states. In Edo State, the Honorable Minister visited the site of the Lokojabene Highway Project, where he interacted with site managers and reiterated government commitments to ensuring that the road is worked on speedily in order to ensure smooth travel experience for road users before the rainy season. If we are building a road, and all the good work that we do means nothing when people are stuck like this during the rainy season. That's what I'm saying. So this must not happen again. So even if it's just one lane, you know this road used to be one lane each. Now we are making it two lanes each. Four. If it's one lane in that mass section, make sure it's moderate. That's all I ask you. Okay? The Honorable Minister's visit to Edo State also included a brief inspection of the emergency repair of Wari Sapele Edo State border in Delta State. From Edo State, the Honorable Minister moved to Delta State to inspect what could arguably be one of Nigeria's biggest infrastructure projects, the Second Niger Bridge. The Second Niger Bridge project is a combination of one main bridge that goes across the River Niger and three secondary bridges that link up several towns and communities in Enugu, Anambra, Delta, and Imo states, as well as approach roads, and is expected to galvanize trade and commerce between neighboring states and communities in the southeast, south south, and beyond. So every week you are casting how many meters? Every week, 27.5 meters. Until casting. until you complete the 1.6 kilometers. No, until the uh, pier 240 okay. until where the incremental launching method okay. Okay. is uh, taking place. Okay. I think the physical structures of progress speak for themselves. I've always said, whether you believe what we say or not, you can't disbelieve what we do. So you can't disbelieve this. This is front and center issue for this government under President Buhari, delivering infrastructure to grow the economy. Uh, 
until the bridge is finished, hundreds, thousands here on this site will be employed here. Men and machines mean that uh, lubricants are being purchased. I think the total consumption of diesel throughout the life cycle of this project is about 19 million liters of diesel. Julius Berger doesn't make diesel, so it's people who supply and distribute. So that impacts also the uh, uh, petroleum sector of the industry. Cement is multiple thousand tons of cement, reinforcement, iron rods, uh, and so on and so cut down the value chain so that people should see first the economic impact, the employment, the productivity impact of committing to this kind of project and actually funding it. Between the 13th and 14th of February 2020, the Honorable Minister and his team visited various highway construction projects in Akwaibom and Cross River states. In Akwaibom state, he inspected the ongoing work on the 254-kilometer Aba Ikotepene Road, a major highway that connects Abia and Akwaibom states. This major project will see the dualization of the highway, which used to be a single lane road. You must understand that it's a construction site. I, I so we have to manage traffic I, yes. and we also have to construct. I we also have to ensure that their staff, your brothers and sisters, and my own brothers who are working here too, are not run over by any vehicle. They are safe while they are helping to do during his visit, he also spoke about the economic impact of the road to the nation as it's helping to provide jobs for people within the area, which is part of the president's plan to lift Nigerian citizens out of poverty. This is the Kalaba Ikom Ogoja Highway. This is a very, very busy and important economic route for Cross River and by extension Nigeria. This is where a lot of granite, limestone and building materials come from to service almost the entire south, 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 and many other parts of the country. A lot of cement comes from here also. So does a lot of agro-produce. And this is also the, the home of one of our famous natural resorts, the Obudu Cattle Ranch. So it's also critical for tourism, and therefore the president being mindful of all of this has ensured that uh, we have completed 67 kilometers of this. This is his commitment to infrastructure and by extension the diversification of the economy. Once this road runs, the economy of Cross River is kept alive. The minister's visit to Akwaibom State ended with dance and excitement from impressed members of the host communities before he departed for Cross River State. In Cross River State, the Honorable Minister inspected the Kalaba Ogoja Highway, which is now nearing completion. The next stop on the Honorable Minister's inspection tour on Friday, 13th March, was in Nasarawa State, where he inspected the Loko Oweto Bridge, which is over River Benue between Nasarawa and Benue States. The bridge is a 2.2 kilometer major infrastructure that connects the north and southern parts of the country. Short diameter 1.8 meters and depth ranging from 30 to 40 meters. Uh, that inspection was a culmination of uh, the planning we have embarked upon since uh, late last year. What we did actually was uh, plan to complete uh, the roads that have reached between 80 to 90 uh, percent completion so that we can complete them in 2020. Uh, so that inspection you saw us doing was to go out uh, to see firsthand uh, to appraise most of them to also ginger the contractors to deliver those uh, uh, roads that have reached uh, that level. This is a major <clears throat> strategic transport route to connect this part of the country and all those coming from the east of Nigeria. So this is going to reduce the journey time between eastern Nigeria, the federal capital, and uh, Nasarawa and 
neighboring states by many hours. Uh, now you can make this connection in about six hours from the east of Nigeria to Abuja. This is a journey that used to take over a day. So this is a major impact on business, reducing the cost time and improving the ease of doing business. The link is very, very important because it is very, very short to Abuja. And we are very happy and uh, sincerely happy and grateful to the, uh, the minister and uh, those that are also uh, assisting in making sure that this thing comes to reality. On the 19th of March 2020, Honorable Minister Babatunde Raji Fashala SAN made the final stop on the first phase of his inspection tours across the country in Port Harcourt River State. His visit was an inspection of the Enugu Port Harcourt Expressway Section 4 about Port Harcourt in Rivers and Abia states, which stops at the Port Harcourt Township segment being upgraded to eight lanes from a four-lane highway. During his visit, the minister spoke about the economic impact of the project. There is a lot of economic opportunity. Sand supply is a business. People are making money from there. Labor is, employment is being created here. Uh, logistics, supplies, diesel, cement, iron rod, the works. This is the ecosystem of infrastructure. This is why Mr. President is really, really committed to infrastructure and it has helped to continue to grow the economy. While the Honorable Minister was on tour inspecting various road and housing projects across the country, the Honorable Minister of State was also on the road inspecting a number of ongoing projects in different parts of the country. By the end of March 2020, the Honorable Minister, the Minister of State and their teams had visited several states in the North Central, Southeast and South-South states of Nigeria, inspected over 20 road projects and interacted with hundreds of local artisans engineers, laborers, and contractors. However, due to the severity of the COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria and indeed across the world, work was temporarily suspended on these roads in order to ensure the safety of workers on site. This in turn affected the plan for the rainy season. Currently, with the phased ease of the nationwide lockdowns and the lift on interstate travel bans, construction workers are moving back to site. At the time of this recording, about 40 major road projects spread across the six geopolitical zones are in progress. These projects include the Abuja Kaduna Zaria Kano Expressway in North Central, the Enugu Port Harcourt Expressway in the Southeast, the Kalaba Odupani Expressway in the South South, the Kano Meduguri Expressway in the Northwest, and the Lagos Ibadan Expressway sections 1 and 2 in the Southwest. What we have at the moment is that after the first phase of the ease of lockdown, we have 11 big construction companies, the biggest 11, the first 11 of the Federation of Construction Industry in Nigeria, who are executing 53 projects for us cumulatively, working now in 26 states. We're hoping that we can, and that's construction work, we're hoping that we can get the Federal Roads Maintenance Agency to mobilize back to site to do maintenance and repair work in 92 sites across 24 states. But it's one step at a time. Even those who are working now are working in extremely risky, uh, in parenthesis conditions because the virus has not been defeated. So much more rigorous use of face masks, safety equipment, cleaning, equipment the work will continue but that would have to be done under safety oversight of ncbc and our medical staff we'll strictly observe the uh, uh, guidelines given by the uh, the task force the covid 19 guidelines. We will strictly observe that and uh, the, 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 the new protocol will be ensured on all our sides uh, so that our workers will be safe and uh, everyone will be safe also. As you can see clearly now, in this site now, all my colleagues are on their PPEs. They are all protected and uh, we have our sanitizers at times. We put it on 
and we have or we all carry our, our nose masks as being directed by the government. So every other thing that is being really ruled by the government is being followed accordingly. Before we start work, every day we must sanitize our hands. We make sure that we don't gather in one place without giving themselves some little distance. As you know, the federal government have given a guideline that there must be at least two meters of distance apart from each worker. Apart from that, uh, we need to wash our hands before even entering the site and sanitize our hand for our operators or equipment users. They need to sanitize the, the machine because different hands use the machine. Despite the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, the federal government is still committed to giving Nigerians good roads and pleasant travel experiences. One key project that has picked up after the ease of the lockdown is the lagos otta Abeokuta Expressway, which for many years has caused a lot of discomfort to road users. But with the commencement of this project, the hope is that this road will soon be fully back in shape, reducing travel times and providing a more pleasant travel experience for road users. The prerequisite for resuming here in the first place has to be absolute compliance with the uh, COVID-19 regulation by the government and NCDC. So the HSC section has synthesized everybody right from the day of resumption here after COVID. We have to use our nose mask, we have to sanitize, wash your hand. In fact, for this reason, the, the, the management even brought a vehicle, a city train we call it. And before boarding it, your temperature will be checked, you'll be sanitized. So to that extent, I believe that we have gone a great deal to comply with the government directive on the COVID-19. Another key area of focus for the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing is the ongoing rehabilitation of access routes which are currently being worked on in preparation for the closure of the Third Mainland Bridge. Every year we carry out hundreds and hundreds of interventions, uh, both on direct labor interventions directly from our staff and our machinery and also through contractors. Uh, this year we, we have a major coordinated, similar coordinated approach in Lagos where a section of the Third Mainland Bridge is being closed. The Ministry of Works has identified alternative routes for, uh, for traffic that are unable to use that section of the Third Mainland Bridge and have called in uh, FEMA and we have sat with the engineers in the Ministry to identify these routes and then identify the trouble spots uh, along these routes that, that are potential bottlenecks. And as we speak now, we already mobilize in, uh, in those locations in Lagos and um, we are working on those, uh, those spots to ensure that the free flow of traffic is not further complicated. This place is terribly bad. And because a lot of vehicles will be using this address too, because of the closure of the Tall Mainland Bridge, so we decided to quickly attend to it. This is very important because vehicles coming from Western Avenue, they can link through Body Thomas Erigmo and then come and join this road to link to either Costain or Ijora through Ingo. So it's a very important link. From state to state, project to project, the Honorable Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, message was consistent and simple. The administration of President Muhammad Buhari is determined to ensure that commuters enjoy a better travel experience and is committed to lifting millions of Nigerians out of poverty through the creation of jobs and the economic impact that increased and improved road access will have on distribution of agricultural produce and local businesses.